Hello everyone. Today we're going to be going over the Stack Overflow developer survey results for 2022. This is something that I'm very excited to see every single year when it comes out. It provides a lot of value to the developer community in total. We have around 75,000 responses this year, most of which are professional developers. And we're going mainly on the technology aspect today, talking about the most loved technologies, the most dreaded, how salaries have changed over the last year, and that's broken down by technology as well. So there's a lot of really good stuff. If you see anything in here that isn't quite representative of your experience in the tech world, please make sure to do the survey next year. Uh, if you want to be notified when that comes up, uh, we have a newsletter which you can sign up to, uh, create a Stack Overflow account, opt in for the newsletter. Otherwise, there is also a research panel which you can also opt in, which is a little bit more involved if you really want to get down into the nitty gritty of things. So without any further ado, let's get started. If you want to follow along, head to survey.stackoverflow.co slash 2022. You'll be greeted by the developer survey overview. Now there is dark mode and light mode if you prefer. How fun. So this was conducted in May of 2022 with over 70,000 developers, most of which were working professionals uh, telling us about their experience within the software development industry. Uh, this is broken down into several topics. Uh, we have overview, uh, which covers a general overview, developer profile, which covers, th covers things like education, learning to code, experience, uh, the type of roles that you have, technology, so the most popular, loved, dreaded, and wanted, um, what you work with, with as opposed to what you want to work with, top paying technologies. Uh, we also have a section on Web3 this year as well. Uh, we can go into work, your employment, um, salary information, company info, uh, whether or not you code outside of work. There's a community tab as well. Uh, and also some sections for professional developers. There's also a methodology tab as well if you wanted to dive into how the survey was put together and constructed. So let's jump straight into technology. The first topic within technology is the most popular technology. So this covers things like programming languages, frameworks, databases, all that kind of stuff. First up, programming languages. Within professional developers, 67.9% of respondents use JavaScript, another 54 use HTML, CSS. A lot of the survey results tend to be quite web heavy with not as many kind of like AI or machine learning developers, people who are working on video games, all that kind of stuff. There are a lot of web developers out there um, and that is very much reflected by how many jobs are currently within the market. If you're looking for JavaScript specifically, um, within the United States, there's 110,000 uh, results for JavaScript jobs. SQL was a run up at 52.64% uh, and that had 163,000 jobs related to SQL. So uh, if you're worried about employment and <laughs> want to secure your job, JavaScript, HTML, SQL, anything web is going to be a surefire bet for you. Uh, within Learning to Code as well, HTML, CSS and JavaScript remain the top. Python actually um, holding a third place here. Python is a very easy language to kind of get up and running with. It's very human readable. There's a lot of really interesting stuff you can do with it. And you can also get down to some quite low level functionality. Python as well is used very much so within the scientific community, um, researchers, that kind of thing. So there's probably a reason why there's a correlation there with uh, Python being that high. Uh, within cloud, this was actually quite interesting. So AWS dominating at 55.17%, uh, Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud running up. The interesting thing I found here is that Heroku and DigitalOcean were down at 18 and 16% for professional developers, but with learning to code, uh, Heroku was clearly the winner here at 35% and Google Cloud at 31% and Firebase coming in at 30%. This just goes to show that some of the technologies that are easier to get up and running with that allow you to um, prototype and build things fast um, are gaining some popularity, especially when it comes to uh, tutorials and programming, that kind of thing. Within web frameworks and technologies, Node, React, and jQuery um, are reigning champs here at the top three. I'm very interested as to why jQuery uh, is still one of the most popular technologies here at 30%. Uh, within learning to code as well, it's still quite high at 24.37. And I'm wondering why so many people are still learning jQuery um, uh, as they're learning to code. Normally when you're getting into an industry and, and learning the new things, you, you try and stick to the most modern stack. So I would have assumed that would be Node, React and Express makes sense. Um, uh, Django to a lesser extent. Uh, but I thought Vue, uh, Vue and Next.js would be uh, higher up the ropes as well. Next.js is fantastic. Um, very easy to get up and running with. Within other frameworks and libraries, uh, .NET is reigning champ, 36.41 respondents using uh, within learning to code NumPy and Pandas. So these are Python libraries, NumPy. NumPy is a mathematical Python library or package, I think. 
with Python. It's very much used within the scientific community with researchers because it offers a lot of benefits for quantum computing, bioinformatics, mathematical analysis. And because Python is such a, I guess, a human readable language, it's a lot easier to work with than, say, for example, jumping into uh, R, <laughs> for instance. Moving on to other tools, Docker has had a meteoric rise to fame <laughs> here uh, over the last couple of years. It's a tool that is well trusted and uh, is frequently pops up as um, the most used in, in the other tools category. So Docker has increased last year from 55% to 69%. Uh, the other thing to note as well, um, if you're curious, Docker actually did a key insights article on the Stack Overflow developer survey results. So you can go and have a look at those as well. Thank you, Docker. The other thing to point out is that people learning to code are more likely to be using 3D tools than professional developers. So Unity 3D, 23% versus 8% in Unreal Engine, 9% versus 3%. It's fun to see people jumping into this, you know, not going necessarily down the web development route, which does seem to be the most popular, but actually kind of uh, having a function, for example, making a game or doing art and then working backwards from there and uh, using tools like Unity and Unreal. I have used both Unity 3D and Unreal. Uh, both of them are great. I think I'm, I lean more towards Unreal Engine, but there are many, many videos <laughs> online at the moment debating the pros and cons between these two. I think uh, Unity 3D is better for um, 2D. It's also C-sharp based, and it doesn't have as powerful of a visual scripting system, uh, whereas Unreal Engine has a system called Blueprints, which is very much drag and drop, uh, and you can get by without coding. But the, the kicker is, is that if you do want to code, uh, you're going to be writing that in C++, which is a much uh, less forgiving language than uh, C Sharp. So pay your poison there. Within IDEs as well, the most popular IDEs, Visual Studio Code coming at 74% out of 53,000 responses. I personally use Visual Studio Code. I think it's fantastic, but I also really enjoy uh, the IntelliJ platforms. I'm assuming the reason why there's a big gap here is that Visual Studio Code is free, whereas IntelliJ is a paid IDE. And that's Completely fair enough. I think the IntelliJ products are fantastic. Visual Studio Code, also fantastic. The interesting thing for me with operating systems here is that I assumed, this is an assumption from me, <laughs> that Mac would be the reigning champ. It is what I use. It is what I've used for my entire career. Uh, I haven't been exposed to many places that are primarily Windows-based shops. And that might be because I'm just stuck to web development for the majority of my career. But we can see here, out of 71,000 responses for personal use, 62% uh, use Windows. And then for professional use, we have 48% uh, using professional use. Linux is also beating out Mac OS here with 40% and 39% for personal and professional. And then <laughs> Mac OS coming in at 31% of responses uh, for personal use and 32% for professional use. The reason I think there's a uh, big jump here is that for Windows, for personal use specifically, uh, a lot of people who are into programming also enjoy video games, as we've just chatted about. And you can't do that on a Mac. So I'm assuming that is why Windows is so high here. I, I am a little bit shocked that for professional use, there aren't as many Macs. I'm wondering as well whether or not this comes down to uh, geography and location. I've worked in a lot of Western companies, whether or not that's different for other parts of the world and they're more Windows based, who knows? It'll be good to see that actually if we could get it broken down by country. Most loved, dreaded, and wanted. This is, <laughs> this is the juicy stuff. This is what you're all here to see, apart from the salary information, which we'll be getting into very shortly. So. Within programming scripting and markup languages, Rust is on its seventh year as the most loved language with 80% of developers saying they want to continue using it. That is a pretty outstanding compliment uh, in the technology world, <laughs> to be honest. So uh, 5,746 responses saying that they loved Rust. Now, for those of you who don't know what Rust is, Stack Overflow actually have an article around what Rust is and why it's so popular. My understanding of it is that it's incredibly performant it's secure, it solves a lot of problems coming from dynamically typed languages. You can use it in kind of like real-time environments. For instance, there's this company here, Oracle, that use it for their kind of like AI-driven like live effects and that kind of thing because they want things that are less error-prone and secure and are going to be able to run in real time. So you can do things like this, which is quite cool. There's also a bunch of different companies that use Rust in production. You probably all know these. Uh, Dropbox, for instance, Coursera, Figma, NPM, Microsoft, Cloudflare, even Facebook, Meta now. 
Rust detects large classes of serious bugs at compile time. The cost of a bug at compile time is orders of magnitude less than in production. Also Amazon and Discord. So it's also trending is uh, another one of the top most wanted languages to use with Python and TypeScript as well coming in uh, close second and third here. Python, I think is just a good language to know overall. It's got a lot of useful functionality. TypeScript, if you're a JavaScript developer, TypeScript solves a lot of the issues. Personally, in my own opinion, I enjoy using TypeScript. Um, I get frustrated with some of the issues that come uh, with JavaScript, with typing, and um, if you're using React as well, pro prototypes. So I, I do enjoy uh, TypeScript there, even though it can be a little bit frustrating to work with at times. Moving down to the most dreaded languages, we have MATLAB, fair enough, sorry, <laughs> COBOL, VBA, Objective-C, Fortran, Groovy, Perl, SAS, Assembly, and just straight C is uh, getting a lot of hate in PHP as well, um, with 58% of spot responses saying dreaded. The interesting thing here is that Java is split kind of 50-50, and there was, I was having a chat with somebody about this, and they were basically saying that the reason why Java gets a lot of hate is that there's, it's been around for a long time, and people are used to seeing 15, 20-year-old Java code that is just awful to work with. And the thing with these newer languages like Rust, TypeScript, and to a lesser extent JavaScript, because web projects typically don't hang around for 20 plus years, is that we haven't seen 20-year-old Rust code yet. And whether or not that's going to be as painful to deal with as old Java code or not, time will tell. But that is something to take into consideration here. Within databases, Postgres and Redis are coming as the most loved. Within Wanted, Postgres and MongoDB and Redis are also coming in with the top three as well. Within cloud platforms, um, AWS. AWS is one of the most popular, but it's also one of the most loved. So that's great. They have a lot of really good learning resources and documentation, courses around getting familiar with what AWS is and all of the things around it. So uh, that is a really good sign here that is popular and most loved. Um, in terms of want as well, AWS is coming in at top with Google Cloud coming in second. The reason I think for this is that there are a lot of roles uh, around AWS and uh, cloud infrastructure and that kind of thing. So it's a, it's a good thing to get into. I've considered doing my AWS course at some stage as well. Within the most loved, dreaded, and wanted web frameworks and technologies, the most loved are Phoenix, Svelte, Deno, and ASP.NET Core, and Next.js and React.js coming in at 70%. When I was having a look through this earlier, I found it interesting that even though the most loved are Phoenix Felt and Deno, uh, they actually don't pop up as uh, very highly in the most wanted. They're kind of around the, um, uh, they're in the top range still, but not as much as React and Node, for instance. And I, I think that comes down to job availability. We've seen here that JavaScript uh, has got a ton of jobs, 110,000. But if we were looking at, say, for example, Phoenix, there's only 8,243 results. So that's a balancing act. When you're trying to learn what new technologies to go after, you have to balance what are the real prospects of getting a job within that technology and balancing out your kind of like enjoyment of how much you want to work for it. It is a double-edged sword where sometimes the more niche the technology is and the better you are at it, the more money that you can charge to do that. You'll see that with uh, things like COBOL and Fortran, for instance. So it's, I think it's really very much a case-by-case -case basis. Within other tools, we have uh, Docker coming in as the most loved, again, uh, that's been <laughs> pretty standard year over year. Uh, Kubernetes coming in a close second there. This is quite a cool section as well, the worked with versus want to work with. Uh, you can have a play around with this, so basically you'll be able to hover over and see the relationships between, say, for example, TypeScript with JavaScript, Python, SQL, uh, HTML, Bash, and what technologies are using which, and they can give you an understanding of kind of like the thinking of what JavaScript devs are doing or what uh, people who are heavy into the Postgres land and, and what they're interested in as well. So you can see those relationships. Moving into top paying technologies. This is, <laughs> this is probably what you're here for. Uh, so there are a couple of ways in which salary and compensation information is broken down within the survey. One of which is to do with uh, purely by technology and then the other one uh, is to do with roles. So under the work tab salary, um, we have it done by role and location here. So sticking to the top bank technologies at the moment, uh, within programming, scripting, and markup languages, Clojure and Erlang are coming in at over 100,000. Keep in mind that when looking at this survey, the United States specifically has a much higher compensation relative to the rest of the world. So we have uh, a lot of 
So we have a lot of respondents from India, Germany, United Kingdom, and Canada. So keep in mind that while Germany and the UK and Canada offer fairly similar levels of compensation, uh, India, for instance, is basically half of that in US dollars. So when you're looking at these results, there is going to be some averaging out between the high compensation areas and the lower compensation areas. For instance, in the United States, they cap out at 200,000. Within India, um, they cap out around 51,000. So within databases, DynamoDB, Couchbase, and Cassandra, again, coming in top. Um, platforms, Colocation, AWS, again, coming in the top range there. Um, Phoenix, Ruby on Rails, and Play Framework uh, for web frameworks. And then moving on to the salaries between 2021 and 2022. This is all quite interesting. There's been a big shift in the economy <laughs> over the last year, which I won't get into too much. But there is a definite shift in trend upwards in salaries by around 10 to 15,000 for most things. Uh, if you're looking at uh, technologies most of you will probably be familiar with, uh, C++ went from 54,000 to 68,000, a $12,000 delta there. Uh, if we look at Java going from 51,000 to 64,000, uh, Python devs going from 59 to 71, JavaScript from 54 to 65,000. So over the last year, there has been an increase in USD of around 10,000 aggregated across the board worldwide, which is great to see. Now, if we're looking at salary by location, looking at the aggregate here, um, obviously C-suites and VPs are gonna be earning <laughs> at the top of that range uh, with, with 170,000 engineering managers coming in at a close second, site reliability, site reliability engineers, uh, security professionals, and cloud infrastructure engineers uh, coming in just below that. The cloud infrastructure engineers, again, if you're wanting a highly paid role um, that is in demand, have a look at AWS. Just judging from the survey, that is, that is a good place to head. Within the US specifically, um, we cap out at around 200,000 uh, as an aggregate there for uh, compensation for C-suite levels. Engineering managers coming in 180,000. Blockchain at 177,000. Within Germany, the UK, and Canada, they're mostly comparable. But the outlier here is that Canadian blockchain developers are getting paid a huge sum of money, coming in at 179,000, which is almost as much uh, as the C-suite level in Canada. Interested to dive into that a little bit more. But there is a $80,000 delta between C-suites in Canada and the US. Compensation in Canada, I've recently moved to Canada, does seem to be quite a bit lower compared to the US counterparts as well. The other thing we can look into here is salary and experience by developer type. One of the outliers here specifically was blockchain uh, involved with Web3. So it had the least average years of professional experience, but it is still incredibly highly paid uh, in relation to a lot of the other uh, technologies here. It's also quite interesting because having nine years of experience with blockchain, uh, you must have gotten in fairly early in on the piece, I think, for, um, for you to have nine and a half years in, in blockchain. Something to point out as well is that while the scale goes from nine to 22 average years of experience, um, around 50% of the people who contribute to the, contributed to the survey um, did have a significant number of years of experience. If we quickly look at this part here, uh, similar to last year, 50% of respondents have been coding for 10 years or less. That means 50% of respondents have been coding for 10 years or more, which is great to see. So that's everything we have time for today. If you did want to check the survey out yourself, the link is in the description below. If you want to be notified the next time the survey goes live and you want to have more of an input into what you see here, as I mentioned at the start of the video, you can create an account in Stack Overflow and sign up to the newsletter there. So I hope you got some good value out of this video. It's a pleasure having you and we'll see you in the next one.